Hi, I'm James McNally and I'm an Applications Engineer at National Instruments UK and Ireland branch and I'm going to take you through how and why to use shared libraries in LabVIEW. So we're going to look at what a shared library is, why we would want to use them and then how we do use them. So a shared library is a library of common functions and common code that can then be called by multiple executables. For example, drivers are often delivered in this format. Depending on your platform depends on the exact nature of the file. So on a Windows platform we use dynamic link libraries or DLLs and that's what we'll focus on today. However, you may see them in different formats on other machines. So Linux machines use a .so or shared objects file. And Macintosh machines use a .framework file. And all of these can be called from LabVIEW as long as you're on the correct platform. So here's a few of the main reasons that we see that people want to use the shared libraries. So the first is to access the Windows API. So there's a lot of ways you can manipulate Windows through its API. And this is all done through DLL calls. Another reason would be to integrate existing code from other languages. So if you have some C code already written that you don't want to rewrite in LabVIEW, you can compile it to a DLL and we can call that code from LabVIEW. Another very common use for this is if customers have been given drivers um, for third-party hardware that uh, isn't already integrated into LabVIEW. Quite commonly this will be given as a DLL for calls from C, so we can also integrate this into LabVIEW using DLL calls. So to call a shared library we use the shared library node, which I'll be showing you shortly. And as I mentioned earlier, this can we can use the same code for calling DLLs, shared objects or frameworks. But there's a few bits of information we need to know before we use these. So firstly we need to know which DLL contains the function and we also need to know the function prototype so that is the name of the function and also the arguments required to run it. Finally we also need to know the calling convention of which there are two possibilities. You can either use the standard calling convention which for example the uh, Windows API uses or you can use the C calling convention. All of this information should be available from the vendor of your DLL or if you've written it yourself you should be able to find this information in the source code. So now I'm going to take you over a quick demo of how we use these in LabVIEW. For this demo I'm going to get the computer name through the Windows API. So as I mentioned earlier there's some information we need to get before we can do this in LabVIEW. Because it's the Windows API, we can get this information from the Microsoft Developers Network, or MSDN. So I found the article which calls the function that we require. And from this article, we can see the function is called get computer name. We have the prototype here. For those of you that are familiar with perhaps C code, you'll see that these are very different data types. And they don't direct, they don't necessarily match a data type in LabVIEW. So we have to understand these to convert them and there's a good knowledge base article on this which I'll put a link to at the end of this presentation. So we can see that we need to use the get computer name function and we can see we need to pass it a pointer to a string and a pointer to a, a D word which is an unsigned 32-bit integer. We can also see at the bottom of here that it's called in kernel32.dll and we also know because it's the Windows API it'll use the standard calling convention. So if we launch this VI that I've created earlier we can see that we have the shared library node in the block diagram. To put this down yourself you can find it by right clicking going to connectivity libraries and executables and call library function node. But you can see it's completely unconfigured at first to configure these, we can double click on them. And this brings up our new configuration window. And you can see this is one I've pre configured, but I'll take you through each stage. So we've selected the library name, which in this case is kernel32 DLL. Once you've selected this, it will populate this drop down box with the possible functions. So we want get computer name, and the A extension just means we're using ASCII coding. The thread options are due to the inherent multi-threading in LabVIEW. 
So while this may be fine for a lot of DLLs, some may not be what we call thread safe, in which case you should run them in the UI thread so that they're only run once and never multi-threaded. Final setting on this window is the calling convention. In this case we're using the standard call because it's the Win API, but you can also select the C calling convention here. The next thing to configure is the parameters. So this is what completes the function prototype for us. So all functions will have a return, even if it's of a type void. In this case it was a boolean which can translate to a 32-bit integer in LabVIEW. To add additional parameters, you can click the blue cross or delete them with the red cross. So the next parameter we put in is the LP buffer and this was the string. So we selected the type string and this gives us a few additional settings below. So we've selected the C string pointer format and we've also been able to select a size as this is one of the other parameters we pass and this option is available for strings as well as arrays. So the final parameter that we have was the size. So this is of a type numeric which is, gives us some slightly different options below here. In this case it was a D word as I mentioned. So this is an unsigned 32-bit integer and it was also a pointer so we select a pointer to a value. This could also just pass the value itself if necessary. And we should now see a completed function prototype along the bottom. So if we OK that we can see that we've got all our terminals wired up already. You can actually see the names as well by right clicking, going to name format and names. And if we now run this, it returns the name of the PC. One of the other reasons I mentioned people may want to use DLLs is to incorporate a driver which is not built into LabVIEW. In this case, you'd need to do an awful lot of these nodes but we can import them automatically with the import wizard by going to tools, import, shared library. So from this we need to select the DLL that we require, which I've created one already, called calculator DLL. Now what we need to make this work, however, is a C-based header file, which in this case I have and it's automatically assume that it's in the same folder, which in this case, case is correct. We can also add additional includes if we need to include extra definitions, but in this case we don't. And that will pass the header file to work out the functions available, and you can see it's found add, divide, multiply and subtract, which are the four functions within this DLL. By clicking next, it will ask me where it wants to then put the LabVIEW library that it will create. I can choose the mode of error handling, so in this case I'll use simple error handling but also of use might be to call other functions to check on errors. Once we do this it allows me to check all the individual function settings that it's imported. For now we'll click next, go through the report and now it will generate the VIs for us. So what you can see is it's generated a LabVIEW library for us this included the DLL and the four functions all built into SubVIs already. They've all been connected up correctly as SubVIs and now we can test this and see that it does the correct operation. So in summary, shared libraries are libraries of functions to call common code, such as drivers or the Windows API. We can call individual functions in LabVIEW using the shared library node or we can import entire libraries using the import wizard. So just a bit of additional information for you. Uh, there's a DevZone article and there's also the MSDN network, which I mentioned. That's the knowledge base, which if you search that ID number on ni.com, come up with it and that shows us the different data types. And of course, LabVIEW help has information on how to use the shared library nodes. If you do have any additional trouble, please go to ni.com forward slash support.